Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Final Circle, your one-stop shop for everything going on in Series E in the Apex Legends scene as a whole. My name is Yeso. I'm your host, as always. Excited to be here with you once again. We've got a lot to talk about today. A brand new patch coming up for Apex Legends, the coming season of the ALGS Pro League and the preseason qualifiers that start here this weekend and much, much more to discuss. So we'll get into that all here on the show today. Now, for those of you that may be new and don't know exactly what Series E I can, is, I can break it down for you, okay? Series E is a professional Apex Legends open circuit that absolutely anyone can join. We have nine squads that made it into this season either through our preseason qualifiers or based on their placement in series, Season 2 of Series E. All those teams have now been drafted and signed by our nine partner brands, and each player now makes $750 a month salary, as well as competes weekly for points and prize money every Tuesday night against other open squads, just like they used to be themselves, and then every single Wednesday against some of the best pros from all across North America. Now, if you and your squad want to get in on the action, head over to matcharino.com slash ESA right now to sign up, or if you're watching the show live, you can just use exclamation point sign up in the Twitch chat. Now for our schedule every single week, we're live on Tuesday and Wednesday, kicking off at 4 p.m. Pacific time right here at twitch.tv slash esports arena for our shows. Tuesday is open night, Wednesday is pro night, and then we're here for Final Circle every single Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time to break down everything over the last week. So make sure to clear out your schedules. You're not going to want to miss it. Now let's start with the latest week here in Series E. It was Splash Week, and coming into Tuesday night, Team Splash was trying to close the gap between themselves and Team Pop-Tarts, who currently controls the final spot safe from relegation for the season being fourth place. The gap was not large. I believe only 32 points coming into this week, so Splash had a huge opportunity during their sponsored week to try and jump ahead of pop tarts meanwhile other squads are trying to chase down team intel in first place and intel is trying to build off of a strong lead and a very very good season so let's see how all the action broke down on tuesday night it's splash week this week a faster pace than this but all these teams playing this extremely disciplined big grenade right there as blueberry is just going in i've been so impressed with his movement overall just look at the way that he's going in and out of that bubble you can see exactly why playing for jungle gym controlling space with that caustic as well as duke gets challenged but lion will fall instant turnaround onto the next member they've got the barrels down trying to heal up throughout all of this I like this play. He's going to go drop down with the Thermite. Has Light Star Joe fairly weak, but that is a battery going in on over towards the back. Skittle Cakes with the L-Star, though. There's still a chance. Force is still full shield. Coming in with the flank, almost getting the knock out of the game. He's able to. Skittle also hits the heal. There it is. Team Intel, basically with the two on three. It has to be careful on that 1v3 peak, but the rest of his team has fallen in suit, and now they are in there with him. It's going to be ASC losing out on Brandon, and now Team Razor will easily clean up this squad, but here's Ron. Rockstar with the third party coming up behind them. The armor swaps were not fast enough. Crummy getting the first knock on to Mr. Haculo. Now the things, uh, the, the domino upon the cells. And now they pop that barrel. They pop the bubble Smart. and they push forward here. And they've almost got the knock. And Human's the first one to fall. Intel gold back res as well. Coming in from dupe and Skittle Cakes. Just going to go ahead and take the peek by himself. He's got the L-Star to finish him off. And Team Intel are about to get the back-to-back -back wins here in series. Easy. The playoff of right now, but it's Team Pringles who have nothing here. They're getting pushed from all sides. They got one knock, actually two Ooh. on the other side to reset out for them. But are the third party showing up? It looks like Team Cheese that are involved in a fight of their own, so they cannot put inside here. Forced into that corner for now, but Skittle Kicks and Verholzer are dropped down low. It's Dupe that's the healthiest member, and the only member still up now is RCO. Getting some punishment here. Bubble res to get one member back up, but that is not going to be a gold bag rest. Defensive apartment down, and now Duke is going to be left to try and survive for as long as possible throughout this. And he bit. Get yeah, the ring was pressuring them, but here's the drop down now. Applejack's bringing this down to a 2v2. It's all up to Blueberry Smalls, though, but the defensive bombardment is good. The barrels are almost all extended on the others as the first uh, push comes out. He tries to clear that barrel. They lose out on one on the other side. Shosuke is the one that falls, and here comes the full push. Scissors falls. And Dome Lion 
is covering that hallway here. And there's one actually stuck outside. White armor, easy crack. That's going to be Nemusona going down as Pop-Tarts now have the numbers advantage. They'll be able to push forward. It's just going to be L-Star. I'm pretty sure for Razor that there's only two people that are inside of that eggshell. So if they can get in there, they're going to be in the next zone. I'm curious to see what they decide that they want to do is save Sin. It is going to go down. Alternator and Vorholz's hand is up to Vorholz. And he's also going to have to win this, then fend off the third party. He's used to playing Valkyrie, so he knows those plays that are coming through. Acula, who's been on fire with the finish. Baby Tui's there as well, and that should be it. Razor taking the game. That Game number four was their opportunity to, conti to continue, excuse me, to try to rise up in that cumulative leaderboard. I don't think they're gonna lose this two versus three. Looks like now it's a three versus one as both those kills gonna go on over to Cupski. Yeah, now they have purple armors to play off of as well. Start side when you're sitting in that fourth, fifth area. Now comes the flank coming through. Z Davis has been looking so strong with the L-Star. He has to get out of dodge though, shuts the door, throws the bubble to watch his back as well, and then pushes right back into his team so they can try to finish this off again. Get... Thermite connecting onto Sushi, and now here comes the full push out of Pringles. Team Cheez It looking for the third party. Pringles only get one knock, and now Cheez It, they smell blood in the water. They'll be able to finish this one off. Team Cheez It bide their time. Who comes in to help out taking out one member of RCO, but might have just been a third party from the guys area as you can see Perez is being hit up as J-I-N push the bubble they get the re on the holiday jet ski backs away for the rest of his squad to try and deal with his now quick armor swap as well be fighting over here and it's gonna be blockbusters actually trying to make the push got the barrels going in they've already gotten one two knocks and it's just the last number of two 51 points after the first two games skittle case with the oh. triple tank oh my goodness Oh my goodness, Me giving him a double take, and that's the first knock. Presley goes down. Team Intel will wow. take three wins overall today. Let's check in with the Mobile One leaderboard to see who that will be, and it will be Stick Drift OP taking second place. Tuesday night was an absolute blast to watch, especially for myself as a Team Intel fan. Picked them to win the season here in Series E at the start on our draft day and they continue to impress me as they absolutely crush the competition on Tuesday night. You can see 104 points for the squad was their second over 100 point night on the season. They have been very impressive so far this season. So love to see that from them. Stick Drift OP came in second place and they were followed up by Team Cheese it and Team Pringles. One of the better open night performances we've seen from Team Cheese it this season and meanwhile Pringles having a solid point total but considering they were essentially doubled up by Team Intel isn't doing them any favors if they're going to try to close in on Intel for first place this season they're looking for that repeat championship and it's looking very difficult now let's take a little bit of a deeper dive here on Team Intel's performance on Tuesday night as we pull up some of their stats from that night and they absolutely crushed the competition i already said it but this just shows it even further through six games the team got 55 kills so over half of their points just coming from slaying out their average placement of 3.5 was impressive and not surprising though considering they finished in the top five in five of the six games with three wins they won the first two games and then closed the night on a win in game number six also with the squad averaging over 3600 damage per game intel was just frying anybody they could see so intel with a very strong performance here secures them their third open night victory of the season which is a very impressive total they now hold a 94 point lead over team pringles in the cumulative standings which we will break down more here in a little bit but intel has got to be feeling very good with just two more weeks remaining in the season now let's check out our open team standings i've mentioned it throughout the season but all of our open squads are fighting for a secured spot next season whoever finishes at the top of these standings will automatically qualify for season four of series e and currently bench warmers still control that but stick drift op getting some points on the board the problem is the season is running out only two more open nights left ahead and it appears like sniper meta bdp and pss are the only squads that will likely be able to threaten the bench warmers for that guaranteed slot but we'll have to see how things finish up here in the final two weeks now let's move on to Wednesday night. 
Intel coming off of an impressive performance on Tuesday, were looking to carry some momentum into the competition with the pro teams. Meanwhile, Splash was looking to have a bounce back after a bit of a letdown Tuesday night. Also, you've got some of the biggest squads in North America, TSM, C9, G2, all coming out to compete with our partnered squad. So let's see how all of the action shook out on Wednesday. It's day two of Splash Week, and that means Pro Night here tonight. Be Cloud9 looking to try and make the push on in. It's going to be Cloud9 going in, getting the two knocks. And the rest of these teams do is now Cloud9 eating some gas over here. It looks like they were able to take out Team Intel. Now TSM comes through with the third party. There's the Havoc coming through. There's the Scout for him. But all three members are on the ground, and there they go. They will be able to get the cleanup, but another third party coming in. But Gentrifying is doing so much work. The PK is enough to take out Gibby. Left in the 1v1. Hits for the 102. He just needs one more pump in. Pulls out the R301 instead. Fighting around the bubble. Drop down to about 90 HP. The cost of gas still oh, being a nuisance goodness. to him, but he players remaining as G2, they're out. They do not have design full. It's just results of here, securing so the thirst at least onto Finicky, but Mollus will be able to finish him off. Now, Cheese are down to a coming through. I mean, there's no way he gets this chamber, so let's Wait, Clint actually hit the reset. Maybe they actually let him get it to get the additional kill point, but they're not gonna risk <laughs> it at all whatsoever as well. So Mooney needs to be able to get it down. It's gonna be the bubble forward as they try and force them in. And there it is, the Nox nice. grenade comes in, get the full nice. connect. They should be able to get the Nox, but no, it's gonna be Sticks that takes out Mooney first. So now it's a 3v2 for Pop-Tart, 303, just wipe them out. What? The building, Hal's actually gonna go and call for a roof charge. But if you claim her up, that's basically suicide. They're already sitting up there. Unfortunately, that's gonna be all she wrote for TSM, unless Hal's able to get nutty with this 3v1. <laughs> Renegades barrel in for that final 3v1 bail. It's kind of tough to predict that's going to go over towards the thermal station side when you're so focused on fighting. But speaking of fighting, Rice Crispy Treats is going to have one down. That seems Stono gets thirsted by Zara Tricky as Hakula is going to come around the corner with the spray. And now it's just one player alive over here. And this was what Razor does so well. Once they get the advantages, we saw the clips from yesterday's open day. Hakula was playing amazing when he gets the advantages an eye on it except versus CLG taking place once again and it's up to Klain once more the trades have come out and this is what we were talking about TSM move in for the third party but another team's actually shown up for this one and so TSM are just trying to secure these thirsts on the ground first and then fight for this 3v3 Imperial Howl is the first one to go down on the TSM side that's gonna be the Pittsburgh Knights picking up two sniped down the only one wow. left and the Knights wow, wow. absolutely murder anyone ahead of him the 91 narrowly missed out on that knock but here comes a the thermite just to flush them out of that position big connect as well he gets the knock on the tech and now they're gonna be able to finish off the rest of team eras versus pop tarts on the other end pop tarts not forcing the issue quite yet bronzy gets the bat off but it's not enough it's down to a 3v2 now team pop tarts down to a 2v1 uh, and it's gonna be pop tarts the slow towards where gentrifying is but here we go clg versus x set Clarify has answered back, taking out Vatra at the very least, but now it's down to a 1v1. Does Kenny have enough left in the tank? He's got a Mozambique, and he just charges right into the Mastiff of Bird. Liquid, but doesn't even matter. They just run right past it now. They're trying to fight back with these nades, but they're cornered inside the car for now as the knock comes out onto Flanker. Gibby does fall to fun, bringing it down to a 1v2, but they've got the man advantage. They'll be able to finish off Team Liquid. Shots were perfectly executed as well. And now Rice Krispy Treats coming in with a nicely timed third party. Shots are looking solid as well as Pow Pow is going to eat it. And I mean, then Sona is going to go in on this one. And that's going to be Renegades going down. Two for CLG as G2 now are about to take the win here in game number four. There it is. Nicely done. I mean, you can't get much better than that. He's going to have to portal right back. And he's actually going to end up dying to the zone. <laughs> Players and teams like TSM and Imperial Howl now. Wow, Elbrilly gets sent on by turns. Immediate knocks coming through onto Zach as well. And now Naughty's going to be finished. About to get sandwiched by multiple teams. It's Era that's playing off of Harvester right now. His big connects come out from Tech and he instantly makes the call. They're going to send it right into the bubble. They've got the Eva 8 out. Hits for Flesh. That stink going down first. Instantly answered back by Kodagami, though it's still a 2v2. But Bowser. And it gives him the man advantage possible and then slowly move in with this circle jump pad is down looks like they want to go and just brawl inside here because oh, they see oh. the team is healing 
Psycho plays coming in from Hal, but that's what you want to see. They also have the next bubble from Prize if they need to use it. To the low, Backlon takes out Imperial. Hal of Breezy will fall as well. Backlon is putting in work, and TSM get knocked out, but here comes G2 to get the back-to-back -back left in a 3v1 once again. G2 <laughs> will be able to finish it off. The news here, multiple teams in the area now dropping down to finish off this Gibraltar, hitting for flesh twice. He got a quick armor swap off, but the EVA 8's gonna be enough. Taking out Bowser, Stunny answers back, but still the 2v1 for Team Razor here. Zara should not be taking a 1v1 though. He needs the backup. Stunny is keeping this alive, and now this is a scary situation. You can see the Crypto player. He has less than 100 HP to his name as he chases after the last member does get that. Will he be able to punish it? Here's Pringles, though, still over at Fragment, trying to make a push now. Uh, so we've been having a lot of action with this ring closing, surprisingly enough. 303 do get finished off in the meantime, but Pringles now trying to hold this building. They get challenged. The bubble has gone down. Phony, despite getting cracked, will continue to push forward. That's going to be sniped down going down. Kills from above. It's going to be a 1v2. Do do they have the armor swaps. There's the knock. Z Davis. He just needs to connect with these shots, but now he's been cracked as he goes for the drop down. Misses almost everything on that R99. But he pulls it out one more time. And does he clutch up? Uh -oh. No. Just a moment as we check in with the Mobile One leaderboard. We had a lot of teams fighting for that top place. And G2 will be able to secure the bag. Seven Wednesday night was action-packed from start to finish, and once the dust settled, G2 Esports were on top of Pro Night once again. They've now won back-to-back -back Pro Nights here this season, and they did three in a row to kick things off, so they continue to absolutely crush it when the best of the best come to compete. They end up beating out the Pittsburgh Knights, who grab second place, and then Renegades, TSM, and Applejacks round out the top five. Meanwhile, Team Intel had their gap of first place closed just a little bit as Pringles finished just ahead of them in sixth place, but they're still feeling really darn good. Meanwhile, Team Rice Krispies treats with another rough performance, though they had more than one point this week, grabbing 10 for themselves on Wednesday night. Now let's look at our cumulative standings for the season here. I've mentioned it multiple times as Team Intel leads by 94 points in first place, but the most interesting race going into the final two weeks of the season is going to be for fourth place. Those top four teams are safe from relegation and automatically qualify for the next season of Series E. So that fourth place slot is extremely important. Pop-Tarts currently controls it for the second week in a row and Team Splash is trying to inch up on them but the interesting thing is Team Applejacks and Cheez-It have jumped up into this conversation. Both squads had solid performances this week and now sit less than a hundred points behind Pop-Tarts. Now they are certainly running out of time to close this gap as we only have two more weeks remaining in the season but they have at very least given themselves the opportunity to fight to keep their spot in Series E, so we'll have to see how that race shakes out over the last couple weeks. Now, as we look forward to next week, it will be week 10 here on Series E, and we're closing in on the end of the season. When I'm looking to predict squads to finish at the top next week, I'm looking for Team Intel on Tuesday again. They've won three open nights so far this season. They look extremely strong, and they are playing some of their best Apex Legends that we've seen right now, they continue to be extremely consistent, and I'm taking them on Tuesday night. When I look towards Wednesday, I'm thinking it's going to be TSM. While they have struggled to top the charts here very consistently, they are in the top five almost every single week. And even playing with a sub this week, they still looked extremely strong. TSM seems to be scaling up towards the start of the ALGS Pro League first split, and I'm thinking the time is right for them to grab a first place. So it's Intel for me on Tuesday and TSM on Wednesday. Make sure you don't miss on, out on all the action. We'll kick things off at 4 p.m. Pacific right here at twitch.tv slash esports arena on both Tuesday and Wednesday night. Now it is time for my favorite segment of the show here every week, and that's What's Up? Apex Twitter. This segment is an opportunity for me to talk about what the community is discussing at large or maybe even just highlight some members of said community that I feel deserve some love. And this week I want to talk about Stella. Now the Game Hers Awards are coming up here very soon and it is an award show to recognize women and femme identifying people of marginalized genders in all 
aspects of gaming. First of all, I do want to say this is awesome. I think it is great to recognize all of these people for their achievements and their contributions to the gaming and esports communities as a whole. And we found out just yesterday morning that our friend Stella, who is a producer and host over at IGN and also has casted with us here on Series E, does a ton of work, was nominated for the best on camera talent category for the Game Hearts Awards. I think this is a fantastic recognition. Stella is fantastic at her job. Love watching her do her work and we wish her the best. And we do want to encourage you guys as voting does open up on September 13th. If you guys enjoy Stella as much as we do, please consider going and throwing some votes her way. So make sure to check that out. Congratulations to Stella and we wish you the best. Now let's talk competitive Apex news. Not a ton of events outside of Series E going on lately, but do want to highlight that the Box Fight Championship Apex Cup number five did happen over last weekend and Space Station Gaming ended up coming out on top. So congratulations to them. One of the squads, of course, that did get an automatic qualification invite for the ALGS Pro League for a split. We're excited to see them compete there, and obviously they're starting to ramp up for that competition with this win in the Box Fight Championship last weekend. But the biggest news to talk about in the Apex competitive scene right now is obviously the ALGS Pro League coming up. And what's very important is the preseason qualifiers start this weekend on September 11th. Now there will be four weekends leading up to the ALGS Pro League of qualifiers and the winners of all four will automatically qualify and then the next 16 teams in these standings from those four weekends will then qualify as well so 20 teams are available to qualify to fill out the other half of the next ALGS Pro League split. A lot of our squads will be competing. Players mixing up the rosters definitely here as they prepare for this Pro League split. It'll be interesting to see how these changes improve or maybe not so much uh, these players play, but we are very excited to see all of our Series E pros competing. We wish them the best of luck. Don't forget all of that competition kicks off this Saturday at September 11th. A lot on the line for all of these teams. Finally, the last thing we'll touch on here is just some general Apex Legends news. We did get an announcement yesterday morning of a new patch and a coming event for the season. This event is going to include a Rampart takeover of a POI on World's Edge near Lava City, which looks very very interesting, as well as a bit of a takeover in arenas with Rampart, offering some new interesting twists on the game mode. Looking forward to seeing how that breaks down, but some of the most interesting news came out of the patch notes that we are getting. We're going to see some buffs to Rampart, uh, allowing Rampart to move around with her ultimate, which will be an interesting change, and we'll have to see if that pushes Rampart into the meta. Also, Bloodhound getting a bit of a nice quality of life buff that shouldn't be too bad. I think players are certainly still looking for some nerfs to his gameplay as a whole, but the change to Bloodhound just adds more clarity with the information he provides to his team, and I think it's a nice little look at the legend. Also, the Hemlock will be getting a little buff on its hip fire accuracy, which is nice for the weapon. It has seen lower and lower rates of play over the last about year, so they'll be looking to get that back to a stable Place. Meanwhile, we're seeing some nerfs to Revenant and Octane, which I know a lot of players are going to be happy about. It still doesn't seem to be as much of a nerf as some players would like, but we'll have to see how they play out on the maps. But also the L-Star, which has been a weapon that is just dominating at all levels of play, especially when you go into arenas, is getting a bit of a nerf itself. So a lot of players likely to be happy about that. And also do have to give a shout out to our good friend PVPX, the coach of Cloud9. He has been campaigning about a lot of changes he would like to see in Apex Legends, but one of the biggest ones he's been harping on lately has been the unready bug when trying to queue up for ranked in Apex Legends. And according to the latest patch notes, that has been fixed. So a lot of players going to be happy about that. Certainly frustrating to ready up for a match and turn away and 
suddenly come back and see you were just still waiting on the menu. So thank you very much to Respawn for getting that one fixed. We're excited about the new hatch. That's going to do it for the show though today, folks. Lots to talk about here. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show. If you ever want to jump in on the discussion, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at any time. I am at Caster Yeso on Twitter. Don't miss out on next week of Series E. Again, we'll be kicking things off Tuesday and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I'll be back here once again for Final Circle next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here at twitch.tv slash esports arena. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for joining me for myself, the entire live broadcast crew, and everybody here at esports arena. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you guys next time.